Hello everyone, we're going to be going through many different posts on the R. Kurosanji subreddit. A lot of these are going to be drama posts and opinions and allegations and such. Unless there is other proof, take it as an opinion piece and take it as allegations. And I will have as many sources as possible. But if no sources are there, then that means it's just an allegation, a shiitake post, whatever you want to call it. It is to be taken as an opinion. Thank you. Someone with international tax knowledge did speak up in regards to the issue that happened with Mika Melatika slash uh, Michi Mochi V. She spoke about how an ex-employer, everybody's assuming it's Neji Sanji, and it most likely is, that she was with for two years, which most likely is, before, you know, Vishojo, um, didn't pay her taxes correctly. In fact, they tried to pay her the, their taxes instead of her taxes. And uh, let's see what this person says before we read any of the comments, of course. Let's go here. I don't normally weigh in on this kind of stuff, but here's my two cents as an actual international tax accountant who has experience with appropriate tax. Here's what likely happened. Niji most likely tried to DIY their international payroll taxes without hiring a global mobility consulting firm. So they are withholding taxes for Japan payroll at a non-resident rate without consideration for international treaties or the liver's own country's income taxes. So they tried to treat her as a foreigner who was working inside of Japan. Like if someone was in an actual office building working inside of Japan. From what I'm getting here, that's what they try to treat her as, which is not the way she is. She is a contractor who is outside of the country and is working from outside of the country. She's not working from within the country. So this would not work from what I know. Let's see if, the, if this person agrees. If this is the case, it's entirely possible Michi can get some money back with amended Japanese tax filings. In either case, it's an incredibly sloppy handling of an issue that could be taken care of by the employer. And for the folks who say that your own income tax is your own responsibility, in cases like this where foreign entities are hiring talent, it is not only customary, but expected that they are responsible for navigating your international tax issues and payroll taxes. You're not expected to be an international accountant for yourself. Heck, people are hardly expected to be international be accountants for when they have domestic taxes, for God's sakes. Especially over here in the US where they try to make it as convoluted as they possibly can. You know, if they make it as convoluted as they possibly can, then of course it's not going to be, uh, you know, people knowing what the heck's going on. The fact that they couldn't refer her to an accountant or a lawyer for this shows they didn't have global mobility firms they consulted with since they are accountants and have law firms we work with regularly to refer people to. So they didn't do even the bare minimum. They didn't even do the bare minimum that is expected of a large agency, a large corporation, the size that they are. They didn't even do anywhere near the necessary paperwork anywhere near the necessary stuff that people are expecting in regards to this it says long story short hire an accountant and don't take company at their word or contact or contract without having it looked over not that they provide you with enough time to do so it's more so long story short a foreign company hires you and part of your onboarding process doesn't include meeting with their international payroll consultant that's a big red flag if they don't have an international payroll consultant and they're an international company that's a big red flag i've learned that new today new thing today Brand new thing learned today. Do not go for an international company that doesn't have international consultants. I think that's why Hololive hasn't had this type of issue ever. Because of the fact they do hire international consultants. This is just me thinking out loud. That they would be hiring international consultants for this. And I'm happy that they do. Uh, because, you know, the talents need that. It says down here, Proctor says, Is there any documentation you could provide to back these straight uh, statements up? So to be relevant here. Uh, similar cases said I believe interpretation but would love to have proper citations to br if brought up this past into history um this one right here nta.co.jp Japanese government's information on non-resident taxes essentially if your country does not have a treaty with Japan you owe taxes under non-resident basis however Japan has treaties with over 80 countries actually having to pay this is rare and here it is tax on the income of individual as non-resident of Japan for tax purposes if you're non-resident you are considered a non-resident in Japan for tax purposes unless you have a domicile or have had a residence for continuously one year in Japan. Uh, if you are a non-resident, the scope of what you have to pay is non-resident conducting business through a permanent establishment in Japan, basically like any color. Income from a business that would be attributed to PE, any color, or in, uh, independent enterprise, non-resident, considering the functions performed. Your income from the management or holding assets in Japan. Income from the transfer of assets located in Japan. Distribution of profit for business consulted, conducted, like if you're a business conducting stuff in Japan uh, and you're not there. Uh, consideration for the transfer of land, uh, provision of certain types of personal services, such as entertainers, professional athletes. Entertainers will be what she would fall under. So she would have to pay non-resident tax unless you have a treaty 
with uh, Japan, which I'm not sure if Indonesia has a treaty with Japan. That's something that can be looked at, out for. Let me just take a look. It does. It does have an agreement with Japan, as is shown here. I'm just trying to show you all the information that I can get. Um, avoidance agreement. They have a double taxation avoidance agreement between Indonesia and Japan. So according to this, from what I'm seeing here, Mika did not have to pay taxes in Japan. Because this would mean, from what I'm seeing here, it says here, an agreement between the Republic of Indonesia for the avoidance of tax income with Japan. Uh, the taxes which are subject to this agreement are in Japan, the income tax, income tax um, in Indonesia, the company tax, etc. It says, for the purposes of this agreement, unless the contract otherwise requires, the term Indonesia uh, comprises the territory of Indonesia, all its sovereignty, sovereign rights, and everything. The term Japan, a contracting state, other contracting states, tax, persons, etc. It's trying to say everything. Article 4, we're going... Uh, resident of contracting state means any person who under the laws of the contracting state is liable for tax therein. Basically, if you are able to be taxed in Japan or in Indonesia. For purposes of this agreement, the term permanent establishment is a management, branch, office, factory, etc. that you can be working in. So your home can be an establishment. Use of facilities solely for the purpose of storage. Any of this stuff, any of this stuff covers it. And uh, income derived by a resident of a contracting state from immovable property situated in the other contracting state may be taxed in that other contracting state. Term immovable property. So this is saying basically you can be taxed in this, like in Indonesia, I believe, but not Japan, if I'm, if I'm correct in here. Uh, provisions paragraph one shall apply to income derived from direct use, letting another immovable property, uh, rights variable or fixed payments as consideration of the working of or right to work. In mineral deposits, uh, let's see, profits of an enterprise contracting state shall be taxable only in the contracting state unless the enterprise carries on business in other contracting state. So from what I'm getting here, actually, only she would only have to have paid in Japan, maybe, or it's, e it's either or. So either she would have to only pay in Japan or she would only have to pay in Indonesia. She wouldn't have to pay in both places. So let's say that it works out that she was only she only owed taxes in Japan. That means any taxes through Indonesia would not be able to be done. But she is a resident of Indonesia. So Indonesia gets first dibs from what I understand from all this thing. So Indonesia would get first dibs and then Japan wouldn't be able to get anything else. So in this case, if she wanted to do this, from what I understand, again, I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. She would be able to possibly get money back from the government of Japan for being double taxed because she got taxed by Indonesia and she got taxed by Japan. She would be able to get her money back from Japan, from the government of Japan, basically a refund for everything, from what I understand. This is a big one, a big of an, an addendum. It says nationals of a contracting state should not be subjected in the other contracting state to any taxation or any requirement connected therewith, which is other or more burdensome than the taxation and connection requirements to which nationals of that other contracting state in the same circumstances are maybe subjected. Basically, this prevents double taxation. This is double taxation prevention. This means that, for example, me in the U.S., but the U.S. is a little bit different. Let's say her in Indonesia should not, this, this one specifically her in Indonesia. Indonesia should not be subjected to tax in another state, which is burdensome, which being double tax is always burdensome. So it's one or the other. And in this case, um, of course, Indonesia would win. Indonesia would absolutely win. Again, I am not a tax lawyer. I am not a lawyer. I am not legal counsel for anybody. I was informed of this today, which is kind of one of those last minute things that does happen. But WeebCon is, of course, a very popular uh, convention that happens it's texas all the time march 29th to march 31st it happened this year it was very successful and they've been doing a lot of wonderful events they have industry people from all the way from comics to vtubers to other industry folks like they have here as you can see celebrity events things like that well i believe it was uh last year or the year before that they had false id who as we know is a person who is a news vtuber he covers a lot of the different news that goes on in the spectrum of vtubers Nidhi Sanji, Hollow Live, big, small, it's all a part of this whole thing. It's all a part of his whole thing that he does. And I respect him a lot for that because he's he's one of the big ones in there. Well, he went to WeebCon, and as in WeebCon, you have standees. A lot of times when VTubers go in, you have a standee. As you, you know, you go around and then people can take pictures of the standees. A lot of people were taking the standees. Someone took the standee and took it to the Nidhi Sanji area of WeebCon. And he said, I came to the wrong neighborhood. Now, the issue is Nidhi Sanji does not like false ID. Last year, I believe it was last year or the year before that, he got like 20 copyright strikes. He got a bunch of copyright strikes on his videos from Nidhi Sanji because he was saying, you know, the bad news that was going on, like what's going on now. 
he and Kyo, K-H-Y-O, the, the bunny rabbit looking one, uh, he is the one, they both got hit with that. So it ended up happening later on that we find out through False ID himself. He recently put out a video that, that states this. He got told by Weebcon to please remove the photo. Uh, he asked by his connection to Weebcon, the person, the, the representative that helped him get into Weebcon, helped him get, you know, whatever it was that he was doing, whether it be, you know, just having a standee in there or having, you know, a pass or whatever it ends up being. False is, uh, he says, I wanted to relay some dumb politics to you. Weebcon is asking they should possibly remove the post about being in the wrong neighborhood with Niji cast in the back. We don't care about any of that, but I guess they're threatening Weebcon hard with making sure they can't book Japanese VAs and stuff next year if it's not taken down and stuff. It's up to you in the end, but they wanted to ask if it was possible and apologize for the annoying politics Niji is bringing to the event with this. This was in 2023, so it was last year. They are working on cutting ties with Niji so they won't be involved in 2024. And I believe they actually did because it's too much to have to deal with the politics of this type of situation. You just want to be able to have fun. You want to be able to go and have fun and enjoy yourself. Of course, they are working with cutting ties. Of course, again, sorry for being in the middleman to give you this request. Weebcon said it's all up to you. It could be possible empty threat, but that could hurt the convention a ton next year if it's not. And False ID responded within, I don't know how many hours, maybe an hour or two. He said removed. Thanks a ton, False. They will be happy. We all know how annoying Niji is, and that's why Weebcon is done with them after this. And the redacted parts are personal things. Of course, he does not want to out the person who is involved in this with Weebcon. So, of course, everything has been redacted. Also, I know you're going on vacation, so I hope you have a very good, enjoyable vacation. False ID says, I just woke up and saw your message here. Thank you for reaching out. No troubles at all. We think it's BS that something as harmless as a little joke would cause this. Basically, would cause, you know, this type of situation. And I honestly can't imagine how this particular thing, this particular situation is in any way, shape or form uh, acceptable. Like, I don't I don't get how this can be acceptable to anybody. So at the bottom of the, of course, uh, I read what it said at the bottom because you guys can't see it for whatever reason. Uh, the bottom is cut off and I don't know why, uh, but I read what, what it said. It said, oh, no troubles. We think it's something as harmless as this would cause any kind of issues. So that is the tough part with dealing with Nidhi Sanji. Hollow Life, as far as I know, doesn't do this kind of stuff, but Nidhi Sanji does. So that is the hard part with dealing with that. It's unfortunate that False ID had to deal with that. They already don't like him because he's a news VTuber and he does that kind of stuff. So, of course, it's going to be seen as negative for him. And I'm glad that he is no longer dealing with that. I'm glad that he's no longer has to worry about that kind of stuff and that he's doing well for himself. Thing that I have been <clears throat> informed of, Mika Neko, as we know, was going to be doing a voice uh, voice lines for an anime down here. And she has basically Koita staff saying in their tweet that there are, you know, reasons that can't be um, said for production reasons that she's going to be canceled. Like they're basically they're canceling her appearance in the anime because you haven't provided a clear reason. The only thing I could do now is express my dissatisfaction with you down here in this whole tweet. Someone actually goes through and says, for those looking for the translation of the above notice, it states as follows. Cancellation notice. The artist debut and CD release for Koito Ria for spring 2024 has been canceled due to production reasons. Please note the cancellation was not due to reports in some weekly magazines, nor any disputes in the artist's personal life. The fact that they are stating this is going to make every single person think it is due to the Mafu Mafu situation. Too bad PR, two people probably dogging the publication itself, people actually saying negative things in regards to the publication, whatever you want, what have you. Uh, they will be held responsible for this by a lot of the fans because we want to know what it is. Not held responsible in any kind of negative way, but it's wanting to, to hear and see what, what it is. What is the reason why you're doing this? Says, please refrain from slander or spreading speculation about the person in question. We sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this may cause our customers who have been looking forward to this event and everyone involved. And it says, thanks so much. Hope better things for me cannot go in the year. It's going back to the other responses. Uh, they're all in Japanese, of course. This person, let's see what they said. They said here, everyone was worried. I'm glad that Mika and Yan made a proper announcement themselves. And the announcement that they're talking about is this one from a YouTube live. It is not going live at the moment. It is live in 2 a.m. in seven hours as of me doing this. 
People says Nekonyan makes me smile pandemic. So I want Nekonyan smile back. That's why I support her and see, see what happens here, basically. And um, it says midnight stream time, bros assemble. Mikineko's love, Mikineko's kawaii. Up here, what I heard is she mentioned getting bomb threats and now a production company she was working with canceled it for a reason that may or may not be related. That's all we know. So there may have been actual threats of violence. There may have been actual threats of hurting her or hurting someone involved in this whole thing. Her whole life is dedicated to entertaining people on the internet. She wanted the viewers to like her. Many did. I am sorry uh, for the ones that hated her just not could just not stay away. Lessons can be tough, but as long as you learn, you can move forward. We're all human. Everyone deserves a chance. Peaceful happiness. May a rainbow shine through Mikineko. She's strong ish. She is. This is going to affect her a lot mentally. This is going to affect her a lot. We all know everyone who knows Mikineko knows that she has her mental state that is not the best right now. It is absolutely not doing the best because of all the things, because of the Mafu Mafu thing, everything that's pop been popping up for her. It is not in the best shape. She did make an attempt before, and this is just not going well for her. This is one of those things that she was desperately looking forward to because it was going to be something amazing for her, something that was probably going to bring more people to watch her, more people to enjoy her. You know, that is something that hurts when, uh, when it happens to you. When these types of things happen, it hurts you deeply. It would hurt me deeply to see this type of thing happen if I was working as hard as she was. So Niji Sanji did a Niji Store New Life Support Campaign 2024. Number of mini clear files giving out as part of the New Life Support Campaign currently being conducted at the official Niji Store has reached a planned number of mini clear files. I don't know what mini clear files are. To be distributed and therefore come to an end. All customers who have already purchased, including the one those who have not paid, have already received the mini clear files. Please note that the be benefits may still be given to customers who purchase after the campaign has ended due to the order cancellations or other reasons. Uh, by closing day of any colors for a quarter, we happen to reach the number of mini clear files. It says if Salome was debuted and became a perfect woman in subs before the listing date, as if she had decided from the beginning. Oh, these people are saying that that it is it is them doing it on purpose, that they're they're trying to make it seem so much better, like they sold everything out. I don't know. These were the clear files, I guess. I'm not sure if these were actual files because they're called files. I'm guessing that these were digital files that you could buy. And uh, here it says, let's see, all points all points have been granted to customers who have already purchased, including those who have not yet paid. Uh, the mini clear files giveaway. Okay. So this, even in this transition, it says mini clear files giveaway. So yeah. So this looks like more than likely some kind of like digital file if they've all been given away, like no shipping or anything because they would have been said shipping they would have shipped or something like that it says so as i said in another comment supporting new life and other companies life support for needy sanji can't wait for the next disastrous report or someone mysteriously bought 60 million worth of goods i mean they could buy them they could buy their own goods but there are going to be expenses that can still you know come out there so i don't know exactly how to take this you guys tell me what you think down below when it comes to this and and in the comments right now what you think about this um this is basically saying basically another success for them another huge success that they got and that is I can't really verify if it's a success because they can just say whatever they want. But I'll leave it at that for now. Huge cope session here where the person is calling uh, the biggest, uh, what they call the biggest offline VTuber concert in Southeast Asia that's been, you know, shown there in, in Virtual Rhapsody. Uh, they called it a simple event. And because it flopped, they're angry. And they are going to, of course, defend. Which, I mean, if you want to defend, if you want to spend time defending, go ahead. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show what's out here. Over here, this person says, what a way to use their own words against them. It says, biggest offline VTuber concert ever in Southeast Asia. A pretty simple event. If you're a fan and call it a simple event, then the word blank off is meant for you. No simple event that costs expensive. I remember the 3.5 stages of the grief and how can Nidhi Sanji, how Nidhi Sanji can make money. I covered these before. I'll let you see them right now. So you can take a look, good little look. But I covered these before in a previous video. And, you know, cope and uh, negligible and, you know, gaslighting and all that kind of stuff. Just send them more money, pretty much. I say in a simple event, V Rhapsody and the whole concert dream hack or the other way around. They were saying V Rhapsody is a simple event and shouldn't be compared to the actual concert dream hack. They can't win on the good quality part. So they try to win on the bad quality by saying there's a reason for it and thus can't be compared. I was wrong. The VR Rhapsody is the bigger event. They're being delusional and trying to win just by the concert point alone so yeah either way it's just confusing um it's confusing still it seems like a cope on my end i may be wrong correct me if i'm wrong of course but i feel that it's just a bit of a cope session that they're having uh either way uh just realize whether i mean dreamhack could have been bad too dreamhack could have had a lot of issues too like a lot of actual technical issues and such those things happen of course 
but uh giving people less than what they paid for when it comes to the meet and greets and things like that are not great and also a lot of things being empty is not great i'm sure they would have called out dream hack if it was empty everybody on the needy sanji side would have called that dream hack if it, if it was empty heck i would have called that dream hack if it was empty i would have been surprised that a hollow live event was empty a little quickie that uh i wanted to mention here Project Vox. So it looks like Vox Akuma's getting his own project. No, I'm just kidding. It's not Vox Akuma. It just, it just sounds interesting. It's Vox. Um, project Vox is holding auditions for virtual idols. If you are male, 18 plus, local to LA, have a passion for K-pop, this is the perfect opportunity for you. I don't like K-pop. So I'm male, 18 plus, yes. I have local to LA, yes. But I do not have a passion for K-pop. Uh, discover more from this one. Uh, 3D concerts. No one's really responded to this one. Project Vox looks like a small project to begin with, which is not necessarily a bad thing. They just seem to have started. They seem to have just started. And here's what they have as their um, their talent thing that they're gonna do. I guess they already have a female side. From what it looks like, it already they already have a female side. It looks like they already have a female side, and they're looking for a male side. I mean, they probably will. I mean, you don't you never know, Lucy. I mean, might as well try. That's what I see. Uh, it's not a great name choice. It's definitely not a great name choice. Uh, having it be the same as Vox Akuma. But it is what it is. I mean, I'll, I'll let them be what they're going to be. You know what I mean? While not Niji related, this shows how drama should be handled. This is drama. Yes, it is. But it's positive. In the sense that this person got themselves out of a very tough situation. Um, this Rose Doodle. An update. Uh, no longer with the ex. We appreciate your concern and care for me. Please respect my boundaries and refrain from discussing this further. Yes, just let them be. Uh, the reason I feel need to address this is because members of my community have contacted my ex, among others, about me and my personal life. That is wrong. Like, you leave the people alone. Let them have their own personal life. You ever some of that implied that infidelity took place within the relationship? I'm incredibly shocked and disappointed to learn that anybody would suggest such a thing. I've never had so much entertain anything of that nature. And the circumstances were as simple as separation. I wouldn't have trusted friends cross international borders overnight to help me safely remove myself from the situation. While I understand that people may seek further information, this will be the only post I will make regarding this as a legal matter. Uh, I am immensely fortunate to have kind, compassionate friends who have given me a safe place to live. Very good. Very glad. Incredibly grateful for generosity, and I'm grateful to anyone, everyone who has taken time to read this post. From here on out, I'd love for them continue, to continue doing my best and make the best content I can. And they will. I can guarantee you they will. They, they have Buff Pup and other people as support. This is amazing. This is great. I love hearing that they got out of a bad situation. I do feel uh, some empathy for them being in that bad situation. And, um, you know, you never know when you're in those situations until it's just already too late. And a lot of times you're gaslit. A lot of times you're manipulated into feeling it's not actually so bad. You know, that type of thing. Such for Rose, the fact that she had to specify stuff like safely remove me and safe place to live doesn't paint a rosy picture. But whatever happened specifically is clearly something she wants to keep private, so I won't speculate. Yeah, let's not speculate on what happened. Let's just be happy that she's doing well. That's it. I'm not going to speculate on what happened. I'm not going to speculate on any of that stuff. Just going on the information she gave, she's in a safe place. That is the message that I want to send out. That she's in a safe place. She's doing well. She had really good people around her. Uh, nobody victim blame. Nobody send any kind of animosity to anybody. Nobody even freaking try to contact the ex. What the hell are people doing trying to contact the ex? Don't do that. Jesus. I'm serious, man. Some people are just freaking crazy. But I'm really glad that she got herself out of this. Wow. And here we have her speaking. Mm -hmm. Here we have her speaking on the issue. She's going to go over everything that has been going on, everything that she has faced. And of course, I want to, you to hear it from her. Uh, pardon me if I need to take pauses. I just want to keep my composure. <laughs> it's a tough, tough moment. Tough moment for her. Okay, so I know you guys have been wondering today what the news is. You keep asking. That's totally valid. I know you're all really curious, really nosy, just like me. We're the same in that way. <laughs> and that is something I appreciate about you. Uh, so I'm just going to cut to the chase and just get right into things. I'm not going to build up to it. I'm not going to do anything to be dramatic or anything. I'm just going to talk. Okay? Uh, so if you could just do me a favor before I get started and refrain from asking any questions for now, I would appreciate that. I'm not going to be looking at chat right now just because I want to make sure that I go over everything I want to go over. Uh, I might answer questions after I talk about this if I feel up to it, but it depends on how I'm feeling, so just bear with me. But the short of it is, as I'm sure some of you may have noticed, uh, I am no longer with my ex-partner. We are not together anymore. We have been separated for a while now. And I know that a lot of you may have had some sort of inkling that that was the case, given just how long my visit with Buff and Shy has been. But I wanted to be more Tyler, open and, Buff and candid about it with you guys just to uh, put it out in the open just so we can go over it. Uh, beyond that, <laughs> I want to bring up that bring that up not just to inform you, but I also want to make sure that I ask that this not become a subject that, you know, we bring up ever again after today. 
whether it's here in chat or on Discord or anywhere else or with anyone else, I would just like to ask that everybody please respect my privacy uh, and not bring us up again at all after today. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that it sounds a bit firm to ask that, but I feel the need to say it because people in my community have been, uh, I found out people have contacted my ex-partner among other people without my knowing uh, about me and my personal life. I was even told that somebody implied that there was infidelity in the relationship, which is really upsetting and shocking to learn because I've never done anything even remotely like that, nor would I have ever considered anything even slightly in that nature. <laughs> So, I just want to clear that up too. Uh, additionally, if the circumstances were as straightforward as a, you know, run-of-the-mill separation, I wouldn't have needed to have trusted friends cross international borders overnight to safely remove me from the situation that I was in. And while I understand you might want to know more about that, the absolute, uh, one and only time I'm ever going to speak about that, at, about any of this ever, is, uh, right now, because at this point it is now a legal matter. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> Aside from that, <laughs> on a more positive note, I am really, 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 really lucky to have such wonderful, compassionate, sweet, kind-hearted friends who love me and could give me a safe place to stay and exist and thrive. And I don't think that any amount of words that I could come up with would fully emphasize the gratitude I feel for that. Okay, so that's what we have for her that she has said in her own words. Of course, we will not spread anything further. We will not, uh, you know spread speculation that's what i mean we're not going to spread speculation we're not going to speculate on anything that's happened just taking her words as her words i wanted her to say it herself so that's what we're going to do uh this is just as news this is just going to be put out as news as just letting everyone know about the situation but after i put this out on the video or wherever i put it out that will be the last it will be said no one else is you know just respecting her privacy after this whole situation Meme time, meme time, meme time. We've all gotten to the meme time. I think you guys appreciate it. I hope you guys do at least. The character, Hex Haywire, the smile. That's the actual character there. I think it's, 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 is that Shingeki no Kyojin? The environment. Oh no, that might be um, Berserk, isn't it? Hex disgusts me. Agni made his face the lowest point he had in his life. Though, well, before losing the final piece of hope he didn't know about. So, and ironically, everybody should give Fire Punch. It's Fire Punch. Okay, it's Fire Punch. Pretty fun, totally easy to stomach. Not like Berserk. Berserk can be hard for people to stomach. Moving on. Please come back. I miss you. And this is for uh, Bobon. Bobon was somebody, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they were from Nidisanji, India, maybe, I think, or something like that. They're from Nidisanji. Maybe Nidisanji, Japan. Maybe I'm mistaking people for different people. It happens all the time. Um, and they haven't streamed since uh, Selen left. At least as far as I know, they haven't streamed since Selen left. And I could absolutely understand someone missing. From ID, Indonesia, ID. Okay, so it was Indonesia. Uh, and I can understand them being sad for someone like Selene leaving and maybe not having the desire to do much after everything's said and done. So I can definitely understand that. Let's see what people say. He was least, last active on his PL account over a month ago. I hope he's okay. What's the feel of PL post without going to specifics? Happy neutral person says. Somewhere between happy and neutral, I suppose. So far, he's doing pretty well streaming games with his friends and former XIDs over a month ago, though. So he's not doing any actual streaming right now. And uh, Tax I Crew 2 and liquidation State currently. He's graduating, still needs to wait though because of schedule. This is, of course, a rat. This is a rat of people saying that he is graduating. Of course, they're saying that he's graduating. He's one that I hope uh, lists that need to be graduated as soon as possible because I feel need X and ID was stressed a lot by not having proper management and effing can't expand their audience due to Niji being a dick to all talents. And I agree. They're, they're, they've been super mean to all talents, and um, they do not really treat them well. Maybe working hard part-time to pay his tax, add that with graduation fee, and again with travel fee to JP, suddenly a thing from ID. It's a big sum. If all of this is true, if these rats are true, again, this is just someone on the internet saying these things, so it could be, you know, f false. But yeah, that's the explanation behind this little meme here. And the last meme, I believe, uh, is going to be, well, a couple too. It's going to be this one. Uh, hey guys, my new mint plant is growing well in the ground. People who don't know and people who know. Yeah, because the fact that the mint plant is growing uh, means that Pomu had to get hurt. So that's the whole thing. And it says, it's mint and I sure hope she goes, she grows like crazy and takes over our garden. There's a hell of a lot of mint memes in the comments too. Uh, and here's the last one that I want to put out there. Pekora figures out Dragon Ball. Pekora didn't know anything about Dragon Ball, as far as I know. Had no freaking clue what was going on with Dragon Ball. So this is her trying to figure out Dragon Ball. She says, wait, Goku can go further beyond? Since when? <laughs> she doesn't know about anything, I think, beyond Dragon Ball Z, which I can understand. 
uh, you know, like he has that whole God thing that he can do. He, he can freaking turn into with all these different things. Like my childhood was with like Super Saiyan 3 and I think Super Saiyan 4 was when they can do the, 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 um, the combination of like, I don't know. I think, I think it was something like that, but I'm still not great with those types of things either. But still, like I'm saying, uh, here's the peck what I mean, the one that I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you this one. I absolutely did. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.